if your cab mounts on your frame is rusted, you can cut these rivets out. Archive Garage does make reproductions of these. They're bent properly too. They have this gap here. They're bolt-in piece. Um, what I'm gonna do here is cut this out and weld in some new material. Um, and then on the bottom side, I'll add some extra weld just for strength, but it should be fine. All right, so you can see here, I already took this off, but you can see how it's barely witnessed. So basically you'll grind this down until you start seeing metal. Then you'll take a punch and you'll pound it. And that will start breaking that last little bit of metal there. And then once you see a witness where the hole of the bracket is showing, you just take a couple pry bars and hit it with a hammer and just wiggle it and you don't you don't have to beat the F out of it you just hit it and wiggle it and if there's any little bit of the rivet on the outside remaining it'll look almost like a washer you won't be able to see this edge and you just touch it and grind it some more I mean I went into the metal a little bit but not super bad and then it'll come right off so I had already painted this so I'm gonna score it I mean you can kind of see where it was but it's gonna get ground off and painted again but I'm just gonna score it so when I get the bolts when I get the bolts to go in there I can test fit it I need to take at least one of these out so that I can get I'm probably going to do this one. Um, just, I need three to hold it in position. Get one bolt the size, and then I can get get four bolts. Put one bolt in, and you know, check it to make sure that everything fits before I commit to grinding these off. Um, I'm probably overthinking a little bit, but I'll, I'll probably I probably should measure this diameter. And get the bolt that's closest to it. I mean, it does it really have to be exact size? Probably not. But if I measure this diameter of the rivet, then I have a good idea what size bolt I need. Oh, all right, mask is off. Well, you might say, hey, Mr. Wandering Millwright, why don't you just use the bracket for the bolt size? Well, the head of the rivet probably squishes this bracket out, and this is eighth inch. The frame is 3 16 so I'll take the bracket with me to get the bolt size, but I want to make sure that it fits before, you know, I want to make sure it fits the frame before I just like go get bolts and then come back and it doesn't fit and then have to swap out bolts or drill the hole out larger. So that's why I'm doing it this way. All right, if you're lucky like me, you just say calipers appear and then they appear. But looks like point four nine four, so a half inch bolt will probably work. Four nine two. Four six two, four six one. So see, this is. 30 thousandths larger than the frame hole. 494. Four six. Four eight.
Yeah, I'm probably recording my hand, but yeah, 494, 490. So the bracket is about 30 thousandths larger. That's what I was talking about, that this would be larger diameter than, than the frame hole. Because when the rivet is riveted, they're probably, I assume they're hot rivets like iron workers used to do. It enlarges this hole, or this hole is already a little bit larger. This is supposed to be part of the trans mount or trans cross member. But I think I'm going to keep this for jobs where I do welding if I do welding or whatnot. Nice little stand for my light. So, when it comes to MIG, for some reason, I like to run too much wire speed, so I had to grind this back down there's a little bit there's a little bit of LOP lack of penetration and then this one I ran way too high so I ground it down too and there was also a little bit of the bevel showing but that's because I took a lot of material away as you can see here I'm probably gonna run another little baby pass right here um, this is probably fine here um, I need this curve to be maintained so after it cools again um, I'll probably hit the other side before I do the last couple passes on the top um, my settings it's a dual MIG 151 Chicago electric it's my brother's welder I'm max one at about five there's about 75 amps and 17.7 .7 volts, so I might be running a little, a little fast on my wire speed um, at 17.7 .7 volts. Um, but you can kind of see by the color over here. I got too hot on the backside and didn't let it cool enough. Um, really shouldn't be seeing these colors in MIG welding definitely too much heat I let it cool down to where I could keep my hand on it and just about where it wasn't going to boil with the water and uh, once it's about 400 degrees uh, or less you you can cool it from about 400 it's not gonna hurt anything what you don't want to do is you don't want to rapid cool it from uh, 1500 degrees 2100 degrees 800 degrees a thousand degrees it's cool enough that I I could do it now but I'm gonna wait um, to grind this off well I did this late last night and I probably should have done it today but I did not check that, that it was level I didn't check that it was level compared to the other bracket so it's not level by three degrees so to fix that instead of cutting it apart again is I'm going to um, you can see the yellow lines. I'm just gonna add material. Cause it's just it's just bushings that go through it. So I'm just gonna add material from here over to here and I pop So the piece I added was eighth inch foot. When I put it in here, it wasn't level. I didn't check level on here or on the other bracket so I had to fill this I filled some this way I ground it down flush so I could measure how much left I had to add because this side was low I bolted it up to the truck using some regular uh, nuts I had to go back down to the hardware store to get because I only had the lock nuts 
so I could fit it and I could measure it from the frame down and compare it to the other side. So then I did a bunch of beads, uh, bead padding back and forth this way, one this way, one this way, so on and so forth. And then leveled that and then went in and filled all the butt cracks. You can see there's a couple little weld defects. Um, I believe that's a butt crack. That is porosity. I turned off my gas to go inside for something. I came back out and forgot to turn the gas back on and said F it, send it. So I sent it. So uh, for all the YouTube and Facebook certified welders, if my truck falls apart, it's probably because of that little spot right there. But I polished it up pretty nice. I removed as much of the rust as I could. Right here, uh, I need to hand sand a little bit. Um, yeah, she's pretty much ready for paint. Um, I know a guy that uh, is learning to paint, so I'm going to let him paint this. Um, he looks just like me, but he talks a little bit different. I don't know why. Uh, maybe it's because he's wearing his mask. But anyways, uh, this piece is ready to go. So for all the middle children out middle for all the middle children out there, we know that a lot, there's a lot of things you can't get right the first time. That's why we're middle children. 